Today we're going to demonstrate how to refurbish a TS1 testing screen hydraulic pump with Gilson's Pump Repair Kit number 2, which contains all the internal parts needed to return the pump to working operation, making it a very economical choice to extend pump life. At this point, we've unplugged the testing screen, removed the top cover, unfastened the side cover, and removed the screen trays. Now, remove the clips holding the hydraulic lines. Next, unfasten the three bolts that hold the pump in place. To gain access to the rightmost bolt, rotate the 90 degree hydraulic fitting up. Mark the pump cover and pump so when it's reinstalled later, it will face in the same manner. Now, remove the pump cover and set it aside. Lift the pump out and drain the hydraulic fluid into a container for proper disposal. Now, Disconnect the hydraulic hose fittings at the cylinders. Make sure that you have rags in place to minimize spillage of hydraulic fluid. Once the hydraulic lines have been removed, move the pump and hoses to a workbench or other solid clean area for further disassembly. Now, remove the hydraulic lines from the pump. Next, remove the cotter pin from the pump handle assembly and pull the pin. After the handle has been freed, take out the two screws from the plunger guide and seal. Now, remove the plunger from the pump body. And inspect the plunger and pump housing to make sure that there is no visible scoring. If scoring is evident, the entire pump will have to be replaced. Now, remove the pressure release plug, which is the largest plug on the pump. The pressure release spring and thrust pin with O-ring should come out easily when the pump is tilted. Inspect these items for wear and set them aside. Severely worn parts may signal further damage to the pump itself. Next, remove the pressure check plug on the underside of the pump closest to the pump handle. Removing it will also yield the pressure check spring and pressure check thrust pin with an O-ring. If the pressure check thrust pin remains in the pump, then carefully work the pin out using a small pointed tool and using care to avoid scoring the sides of the pump wall. Again, inspect all items removed and set them aside. Next. Remove the intake check plug located on the side of the pump and away from the pump handle as well as the intake spring and check ball. Inspect for wear and set aside. Finally, remove any remaining plugs located in close proximity to the pressure release, pressure check, and intake check plugs. It's important that you do not touch the bypass assembly. This is set at the factory using special fixtures and should not be changed or adjusted in the field. If you accidentally remove or adjust the bypass assembly, please contact Gilson Customer Service for instructions on how to return the pump to Gilson to reset the bypass assembly to factory settings. Now that all appropriate components have been removed, clean all residue buildup from the pump. Next, inspect the entire pump to confirm that it is completely dry and free from dirt. Now you're ready to rebuild the pump using parts supplied from your Gilson Pump Repair Kit number 2. Now, install the intake check ball and using a blunt metal object with a light tap from a handle of a hammer or mallet, seat the intake check ball into place. Next, install the intake spring, the longest and thinnest spring in the repair kit, and finish with installing the new plug.
Next, fit the pressure check O-ring on the pressure check release pin and install it on the underside of the pump. Followed with a slightly thicker and shorter pressure check spring and then finish with a new plug. Now insert the smaller portion of the pressure release pin into the pump housing. Next, fit the O-ring on the larger diameter portion of the pressure release thrust pin before inserting it into the pump housing around the smaller pressure release pin. The cone-shaped spring is then installed with the narrow end facing inward toward the pump body. Finish by installing the new plug. Now, reinstall any remaining plugs. Take apart the plunger from the handle assembly by removing the chain link clip and pulling the link out. Next, drive out the spring pin that holds back the stroke limiting spring and washers. Once removed, slide the limiting springs and washers off as well as inspecting the old guide and seal before setting it aside. Now, clean the plunger and affix the two new plunger O-rings. Reinstall the new plunger guide and seal, reuse the stroke limiting spring and washers, Drive the spring pin back into place and reattach the connecting link and clip. Be sure to dip the plunger in hydraulic oil before inserting it back into the pump housing. Next, secure the guide and seal with the two original screws and then reattach the handle assembly. Now, reinstall the hydraulic lines to the pump. And now you're ready to reattach the pump to the testing screen. Fix the pump to the testing screen using the original bolts. Now, reattach the lines at the cylinders and make sure to leave the fittings loose so you can bleed the lines later. Now, refill the pump with hydraulic oil and take care not to overfill. The oil level when full should be a quarter inch from the top. Now bleed the hydraulic lines by working the handle on the pump as if we were clamping the screen trays. Observe the hoses at the cylinder fittings, and as soon as fluid appears, tighten the fittings. Next, install the pump cover on the pump, based on the alignment marks made earlier, and release the trays. Finally, install all hose clips, safety guards, and covers before returning the testing screen to operation. For any questions concerning this repair or for any other Gilson product, please contact the Gilson Technical Support Team.